All right, here's the next installment of I Was For Sale. Please don't buy this book. Both editions out there are unauthorized. I think I have a cold and um, my hair is drying. Here I am. It's a Sunday in France. I hope you're doing well. She felt so tiny in my arms. Somehow, in that dirty place, she had managed to keep herself clean and smelling all right. Our shower had gone out of order the year before. I gave her my real name and phone number and invited her over to meet the professor. The professor took a picture of us relaxing before one of our joint bondage modeling sessions for him. Don't worry, I told her. This guy is really, really cool. He doesn't want to fuck us. He might jerk off, but we don't even have to look. He's fast. He likes his models without makeup and light bondage in disciplinary scenarios. There's no real pain involved unless I ask for it in advance. Then I make extra money because he takes my screams. So I charge him a little more for this. He's retired and on a fixed income, so he can't pay top dollar. But his checks never bounce and he'll buy us a modest restaurant meal afterward if we're hungry. He's a solid repeat customer. I've been seeing him about once a month for years now. I've never raised my price with him. I've even slept at his house and met one of his sons. Lily was impressed. His Hollywood career, wartime adventures, and life in academe also added to his, to his cachet. I posed with Lily for him sometimes in Brooklyn, in a friend's apartment, and once we went up to the professor's house in Chappaqua. I retired from the life of a dominatrix submissive after two years in the Grand Central of Sleaze on 23rd Street, described in a later chapter of this book. I worked there from 1982 to 1984. Then gathered my earnings and used them to pay tuition to go to graduate school to get an MBA. I stayed in touch with some clients and working girls and Lily was one I stayed in touch with for quite a few years until I finally lost track of her. She was a seamstress it seemed <coughs> and aspired for real work in the garment industry. I introduced her to some friends who owned a trendy fashion boutique in the East Village, and she ended up staying and being their shop girl for a year, earning a few extra dollars by running a sewing machine in the back space to make punk outfits for a new type of client called a yuppie. I never had sex with Lily, but used to touch her often, fondly. <coughs> she was too sweet to hit on. Also, it was clear she was in love with that faraway husband in Norway. Last I heard from her, she was out of the life entirely, living up in Westchester, and had a job in a couture house. In the mid-1980s, I considered, very briefly, opening up my own house of ill repute, and I invited her to a little casual party at my apartment in Brooklyn to discuss employment with me. She was reserved. I think she had seen her way out of the life and wasn't that anxious to return. More power to her. So I never became her madam. We just stayed friends. Often when it was a quiet night on 23rd Street and I was busy with my regular clients and she had nothing to do, I'd get the client to pay a little more to have her come into our cubicle and observe my session. Actually, it wasn't a cubicle. It was usually a room. I like to think I taught her a lot. When I am submissive, I submit gently and quietly, reminding the tricks that I bruise easily. When I am dominant, I ask if marks are a problem, i.e., is there a wife or girlfriend at home who will notice a whip sting? I used to kiss and hug slaves often, tell them they were good little boys at the end of the session, Sometimes they'd cry and cling to me and say, Thank you, mistress, you are so kind. After my worst spankings, I'd croon to them and caress them and put ointment on their red behinds. Mistress is so sorry she had to be harsh with you, but Timmy, you know you've been so bad. Yes, mistress, I have been. So, now you're punished. Go forth and sin no more this week. 
When you sin next week, come back, and I will give you that spanking you need. Thank you, mistress, he'd snuffle, and then shuffle off to Buffalo. Hey, slave. They often gave their names as John or Tom. Next time you come, could you bring me a nice cold beer? Michelob. This way, I get a drink, and I can golden shower train you if you're ready for that. Oh, yes, mistress, just one bottle? Yeah, I can't get in trouble with the management here for one beer if I tell them it's so I can piss on you afterward. Okay, mistress. You take care now. Be a good boy. Save your sixty dollars and come back to see me. I don't need any tips. Just be a regular slave. That means more to me. I know, mistress. You are one of the good ones. Your time is up now, slave. See you next week, I hope. Next week I have a wedding to attend, but I may come by soon after that, just before closing. Okay, but call first, and don't drive if you're too drunk. Bring me a piece of cake, or at least some sugared almonds. I will, mistress. I love you. I love you too, slave. All right, that's all for now.